Hi everyone. So today we are going to learn a little bit about this H3N2 strain that's been circulating in Delhi and what is this H3N2 and what are the symptoms, how do you prevent it and more about it. So H3N2 is nothing but the influenza virus that in short we commonly call as the flu. Now as we are already aware influenza is of four types A, B, C and D out of which A and B are more prevalent. Now out of these A and B, A is further categorized into different subtypes depending on the structures of the proteins that are present on the surface of the virus. These proteins are mainly H and N, H standing for hemagglutinin, N st standing for neuraminidase. So the combination of this H and N is what actually controls what we call the particular virus. Now, like all of you already might know, influenza is a contagious respiratory illness that involves the nose, throat, upper respiratory tract and the lungs. It's in majority of the cases a mild to moderate kind of an illness but in immunosuppressed and in elderly sometimes it might lead to complications and might be severe as well. Common complications in such individuals include bacterial pneumonia, also include ear infections, sinus infections, etc. Now, now moving forward, as, as a part of the history of this influenza A and influenza B and the various kind of pandemics, I'm sure all of you would have sometime heard of the deadly Spanish flu that happened in 1918. Yes, the Spanish flu was also a pandemic caused by influenza only. And post that, in the recent past, about a decade back, in 2009, in Delhi, there was an H1N1 pandemic. H1N1, commonly known as swine flu, because it originated from pigs, was, was the virus that caused a pandemic in Delhi in 2009. Now, what we have is the H3N2, that is again a subtype of the influenza A, very similar to H1N1, that we are seeing in circulation. Usually the flu season is just before the winters and H1N1, although there are still cases, it's still in circulation, we are seeing a lot of numbers of H3N2 in the, in the past few weeks. Now to understand H3N2 better, the symptoms are the usual of that, that of flu, such as a runny nose or a blocked nose with fever, chills, maybe a sore throat, maybe a cough in, in certain cases body ache, also GI symptoms have been reported. So uh, once, once we get these symptoms, it's very important to also know how contagious the particular person is or the individual is. And the individual is contagious about a day before starting symptoms and till about five days of the illness. Also, once you get these symptoms, it is important to get tested. And the test again is very similar to the very common RT-PCR that all of you would know that was done for COVID. And it is the same nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal swab that is taken. There are labs that are doing the H1N1 and H3N2 testing or the influenza panel, like uh, what some labs call it. And the result also comes out in a, in a few hours only. Also, it's important to get tested for this so that doctors can immediately start you on these medicines that we call as antivirals. These can be Oseltamir or Piramivir or various different kind of medicines which if started early can significantly reduce the viral load in the body and your symptoms can also be drastically reduced if you start this on time. So yes, so once you get a cold or a cough and obviously if you feel and your physician's advises then you must get this test done so that they can guide treatment accordingly. Also, apart from this, from a prevention perspective, again, the same thing that all of you have done so well throughout the pandemic, hand hygiene, social distancing, masking up, all of these are very important because the influenza A or the H3N2 also transfers from person to person by either sneezing, coughing, droplet infection, or even by fomites. That's by touching a surface where someone infected was already sitting or has sneezed on or coughed upon and has the droplets of the infected. Also very important for all of you to know 
there is a flu vaccine that is available and this flu vaccine should be taken once every year yes once every year because like all of us know these viruses are nasty and they actually mutate and change to become more potent and to evade immunity in certain cases also reduce the power of the vaccine but otherwise there are a lot of studies that comprehensively and conclusively have shown that a vaccine not only reduces the complications but also the severity so get vaccinated and stay safe